Do you have a particular strategy for cleaning up broken glass? If questions like this have crossed your mind, then you're in good company. Today we'll be taking a closer look at some of the daily habits and social conventions that make up the monotony of life. Let's only clean a placemat when it's at the point of being absolutely filthy. Grab your knitting needles and a blanket because it's time for three old friends to sit around and sew a new patch into their quilt of friendship. So join me, Dion, under the covers with Christian. Welcome to Patchwork. And Josh. Welcome to Patchwork. Now, before we get started, I was having a chat with my housemate, George, the other day, and we we're talking about a hypothetical person and our generic standard names we use for that hypothetical person were different. Mm. I went with Joe Bloggs well, and she went with Joe Blow. And I was, uh, and we both said it at the same time and I was like, God, it's got to be a Joe Bloggs, right? Isn't Joe yeah. Blow very aggressive? Joe Blow? He sounds violent. <laughs> why, why? So Joe- Coming to Joe Blows. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know the etymology of why why blogs and blow. I've never known a blogs and blow. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't think that they were the first two that would come to mind. I've Steve, known, Steve I've, blogs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely known a citizen. I know yeah, lots yeah. of them. John I, Citizen. Of them. I hate the name John and Jane Citizen. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> because citizen makes it sound like they're using their like profession in yeah. some weird utopia as their surname. By the way, apologies if any listeners are called Joe Bloggs, <laughs> no, Jane Citizen, John that's Citizen. That's their name. Just use Smith. John yeah, or Jane Smith. Well, that's why John Smith in America, that's the big thing because John is like the most popular American name and Smith mm. is the most popular surname. John Smith. That makes sense. That makes sense. What, what's your go-to? If you're, if you're confronted with a Joe Bloggs or a Joe Blow, what are you going for, Christian? Yeah, I've I've tended to use a bit of like a a mathematical um, algorithm when I approach it. Now it's like it's like algebra. I'll say person X oh. uh, was in a hypothetical situation with person Y to outcome A. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we talking about this in terms of calculating. Was it you were saying calculating just, distances between like, two places? Uh, no, I just Very don't like strange. the idea of gendering either. John Yeah, it's Doe. weird. So well, don't use X and Y because you're chromosomes. <laughs> <laughs> you fall into that trap straight away. Yeah, what is what is yours, Dean? Uh, mine changes almost every time because I don't want it to be generic. Yeah, I'll come okay. up with one right now. Anna Narring. <laughs> Anna Narring. Anna Narring. Anna Narring. Sounds like a gold medalist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what sport? I think uh, dive, Hurdles, diving. Hurdles. Oh, I was yeah, going to say shooting. <laughs> Yeah, shooting is a good fit. Um, so interesting, just before the show, I looked up what it is in Germany, and this is what it is in Germany, Max Musterman, <laughs> and it literally means Max example person, <laughs> See, which makes sense. That makes sense. But how can they do that in German? Like, ha- I don't understand, like, what would be the English equivalent to that? Like, John, like, As in, like, how could they or how could they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, John example, right? Yeah, John yeah, example. Yeah. John and Jane example. Not citizen. That is way better. I really like that. Just very quickly, the alternative one they use in Germany is Otto Normal Verbracher, which translates to Otto Normal Consumer. <laughs> in, in, in Italy, it is Mario Rossi. Oh, really? What? Mario Rossi. And Great. And it, it kind of fits with what I probably would expect yeah. it to be. Yeah. yeah. The most generic Italian name. Do you know any, do you know any Mario's, Christian? Uh, I do know a Mario. Yep. Oh, because I feel like the, the, that name should be someone that you don't know and never met, right? They should be anonymous. So you're saying that Mario needs to be a step removed from you. There's I no so. Marios in your life, but you know of a Mario. Yeah, it should be a totally... Fi- you don't think it should be a totally fictional name? <laughs> Mario? <laughs> no. What? What do you mean? Christian, would not- how many Marios do you know? You'd know about 15 Marios. <laughs> I know. In- and that's in know, your immediate family. <laughs> I know a Mario, a singular Mario. And surname? Rossi? No, I think he goes by Mario Mario. <laughs> great, <laughs> great. Thank you for all the gamers. <laughs> Um, the other one, the other pseudonym that's used in film as an example is if you've got someone who doesn't want to be recognised, they go by, do you know what they go by? Their name? Oh, yeah, yes. I do. Like the directors when they yeah. direct a film that they that, that is a piece of crap. They're yeah, like, that's I right. don't want my name on oh, this film. Right. Alan Smithy. Alan Smithy, Alan that's Smithy. Right. That's Smithy. a good one, right? Double E at the end. You wouldn't be, Alan Smith, you'd go, oh, that's a, that sounds very generic. Smithy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just give us a clean Smithy? Smithy. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. 
So a couple of weeks ago, I ventured down to um, Tasmania. I'm not going to reference the tale of Tasmania, Josh, but ventured down to Tasmania. And I was at a cafe with my partner and um, we just ordered. And one of the waitresses was carrying around uh, a big load of glasses that she just collected from the tables. Mm. And suddenly we heard an almighty crash oh, no. and everything was just on the ground. Everything was smashed. Oh, no. But the thing that... The avocados. The- <laughs> <laughs> They're cleaning it up with pieces of toast. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, the thing that I was focused on was not the glass because I didn't need to clean it up, but yeah. rather her reaction. And she was a mixture of devastated and Ooh. embarrassed. Yeah. But like I was thinking at the time, you gotta like you gotta make light of a situation like that because it's ridiculous. So I wanted to ask you guys, what do you, what, how would you be in that situation? Would you try and make a joke about it? Would you like, what would you, what would you do? Yeah, that's great. I've worked at a bar and in a restaurant and a cafe before, mm-hmm. so I've dropped my fair share of glasses. The embarrassment is from the loud noise, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Right. I think anytime anyone makes a loud noise, yep. you feel embarrassed because eyes are going to be on you. Yep. But I would tend to ignore everyone. So mm-hmm. when I, whenever the glasses would smash. I would just go, okay, focus on the glasses. Don't look around you. There's probably people looking. That's weird. Why you, is that weird? Josh, what do you think of that? Um, that makes sense because then you're, then you're getting less embarrassed because you yeah. don't see the eyes on you. But why should there be embarrassment? That you've dropped a tray because of glasses. Because you know that everyone's looking at you going, oh, poor, must be first day. But yeah. great opportunity to make a joke. What, what, what joke? Are you, what are you going to make a joke to every person in the cafe? Yeah, I'd, I'd try and think of something on the spot. What would it be? Well, take a bow. No, I, I reckon it'd have, I, to be, it'd have to be a, it'd have to be a physical joke. I reckon yes. I reckon like um, th- is everyone happy drinking out of their hands? <laughs> <laughs> the remainder of brunch. It's quite good. That is really good. I just think it's that, it's that opportunity. Where, like, what are you embarrassed about? Like your incompetence or the or, as you said, the sound. Like, what what is what is the, where's the embarrassment? I, th- I think the, it's the broken like the, the the money. Like, I what think is it's because it? it shouldn't happen. It's something that shouldn't happen. Like you yeah. should have enough control over your body facilities and yeah. functions yeah. that you're not dropping and knocking into How things. How often do you watch waiters with full trays and go, too many. Yeah. Take less this time around. But when they like when they're picking up all those things and they carry them successfully to the kitchen, yeah. God, that is so impressive. It's, it's it's like when you're at a bar and you're in like the thick of the dance floor and you see one of the like busboy girls walking oh, around yeah. with the yeah. snake 70 pint glasses <laughs> up their sleeves like amazing. a tattoo it's unbelievable yeah, it's gorgeous it's very impressive just in terms of my reaction and my response yep. i was thinking about i think generally it's that sort of resigned sigh and you're like oh yes and you're like great now i've got to clean all this up the, that that yeah, is yeah, such yeah, a yeah. large issue yeah the glass cleaning yeah. is a big thing and it's a big thing when you're at home as well yes. how do you feel when you smash a glass at home it's devastating. Mm. You feel like an idiot. You feel yeah. like an idiot. Is is there any part of you that thinks you have those residual feelings from being told off as a child? Because yeah. I was, I remember, and now when I reflect on it, I'm like, hey, parents, disproportionate response to what happened. <laughs> yeah. Break glass, scolding, hot water poured over my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like a, a real scolding. And then you go, okay, now anytime I break a glass, I have this pit of guilt. Also, just an accident. Yeah, who's not, not deliberately smashing breaking glasses? glasses. Also, yeah. don't make wine glasses so weirdly oh, shaped. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wine glasses are amazing. So I have friends. Names are Nav and Hannah. Nav drops a glass literally every week, and it's usually a wine glass that he really? drops every week. He's also a marriage celebrant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a Jewish marriage celebrant. Probably should have made that a bit clearer, Christian. Why? Because it's Jewish. For the people who understand it, they'll appreciate it. He's not Jewish in Singapore. But anyway, okay. um, <laughs> I've got another set of friends, Adam and Elise. They don't even bother buying wine glasses anymore. Yes. Just tumblers. They've yes. just got tumblers. So yeah. I went over there the other day and wanted a bit of wine. Just like, no, just out of the tumbler. They just can't That's, be fucked. That is all I will drink wine out of. Similar with my grandfather, who I picked it up from, and when I worked at that a big Italian function centre, most older Italian men will just drink from a tumbler, oh. and they're happy also drinking from a plastic cup. Because why? I just don't understand why we drink, and I can understand exactly like the theory behind why you drink out of a big wine glass. Yeah. That you can that it, it that it makes the aerates it and yeah yeah, the, yeah. It moves it's more around palatable like, yeah, blah, yeah, yeah. blah 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 blah. But we're not drinking so much wine that the majority of us aren't. What right? about just want a glass of water at home? 
Josh, what's your go-to glass? Um, what's your go-to glass? Yeah, we like? have these big, thick, sort of IKEA ones. They're great. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're great. They're rock solid. Yeah. They're yeah. sturdy. You shouldn't have to refill too long after filling up. I'll sometimes uh, do a if I'm really thirsty, I'll do like a half glass down it and then do the full fill. Do yes. You, do you not do a yep. full? Why wouldn't you do a full fill and then half? Because down no, it? because then I don't want to come. No, no. What? Why? Because what? You, you do the half fill, you drink all of that. Why? Bone dry. Hang and on. then you fill up fully. Why don't you have the full cup and then do another? Go full? to half. And no, then... no, no, just have a full glass. No. Drink that at the Cause, sink. No, cause go I'm to half. Ha- no, because I'm not. I, I want to sip on the full. No, but why? But I'll you... down the half. Interesting. No. Do you reckon it's easier to sip on a full and down a half? <laughs> <laughs> I, I reckon. Sounds like NFL country. <laughs> down a half now. <laughs> I, I honestly reckon you could down a full and then I sip don't on want a full. To, why? I'd, I'd rather sip on the full and drink that over time. I just need that sure, initial sure. burst of water. Yes, yes, get in the okay. system. Just have a quick yeah, half. Yeah. Just a cheeky no, I half. I, I understand, Josh. Glasses are too small. Yeah, they are. Generally, they are too small. Why? How did we? Why are they not all just like a liter? Like a pint glass? Yeah, they're just an enormous glasses. And it's like, yep, because that's how much normally you want to drink. Of, of uh, they're a bit awkward to hold, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, that's probably are the, they? I would think that's have the you, main consideration. Have you yeah. ever struggled to hold a pint glass? <laughs> Good point. You got me there. Um, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? <laughs> a bit cumbersome. But going back to, um, let's say, Josh, you're getting that, you know, favourite IKEA glass out of the cupboard, and you drop it. Tell, tell it. Just tell, tell everyone. Tell us a little bit about how you're cleaning that up when it drops to the ground. What's your first? Wh- there's the initial. There's the initial immediate back off. Yeah. What are you wearing? Are you wearing shoes? Uh, hopefully. Yeah. Ooh. Hopefully. If not, let's say you're not wearing shoes. Yeah. What are you I'm, I'm often shoeless around the house, yeah. so backing away very quickly. Um, what I'll often do is, I guess if you can tell it's like shattered and there's like a lot of little bits, yeah. I might be a bit more cautious. But let's say it's like a, a normal break. I'm probably hand picking the big bits. Yes. Uh, hand pick yep. the big bits yes. into the biggest bit. Yep. And then what? And then that goes in the bin. Oh, straight in the bin. Yeah, yeah. What the bin with the thin plastic lining that's uh, gonna that's gonna yeah, pin- yeah. Just, that doesn't sound like a good idea, does well, it, Christian? Now, well, now we have a glass <laughs> glasses bin, so it can go in that now. Oh, you put that straight in there. Uh, I would. Oh, yeah, would just you, go out the front, dump that straight in. Would you not look for an empty carton of milk? I mean, what? What? Did you guys not do that when you were younger? No, that no. Was the go-to. That was the go-to when when how much milk are you drink when milk oh we use as it's a great quick, question no, no, Dio, no. quick deal broke a glass have some milk <laughs> <laughs> when we used to back when I was younger we used to get milk delivered in cartons we used to have a big mailbox as well I reckon each week we got like nine liters of milk <laughs> it was an extraordinary amount we, I don't know how family of five. I don't know what too we were doing. Milk, too much milk. Really strange. But so um, you put it in the empty carton, cu- cut it, or open up the top yep. of the carton, yep. and then put it in the perfect receptacle for yes, broken glass. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. What That's did you? Nice. Used to, what do you do, Christian? Just straight. Well, I've always really? been. I've always worried about putting broken glass into the bin because the the liner is so thin. Yeah. But I think you just have to make a mental note when I'm taking this bin out when it comes time to putting out the trash. Yeah. You have to be very careful about how you're pulling it out. What about the garbos? What about if they touch the bag? No, it's mean? the machine. Have just you dumps it in? What do you mean? Yeah, they back in, I'm going. Bag. Yeah, I guess yeah. they didn't used to do it. That's a fair <laughs> point. But in terms of my process, so we've got rid of the big chunks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then yeah. next, I'm probably heading towards. I guess. Sorry, a big consideration is how much liquid is, is that's, there. That was that was my question. Oh. <laughs> Are you cleaning up the liquid first or the glass first? Oh. So I'm going to the dustpan and broom is my next step. The dustpan and broom. And brush. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you set up at your house? So very sorry. difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult trying to broom into Josh, a tiny little Josh pan. Has been, Josh has been trying to get through a one sentence <laughs> for about three minutes. Over in Western Australia, it's a dustpan in broom. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got the dustpan and brush. Yeah. Um, and I'm using that for the bits that are too small to pick up by hand. Yep. But then they're um, getting in the, the bristles. They are getting in the bristles. What are you doing about that? Um, we'll come to that. Okay, I'm sorry. So we're doing that first. And then when I'm satisfied, I've got most of it. And it's probably yep. the little boys left. Yep. Then I'm getting probably wads of paper towel. Big, oh, thick wads. Wads of cash to clean <laughs> it all up, yeah. Never would have thought of paper towel and ever. then Because, well, it's, there's liquid, right? It's clever. And so doing that, but also making sure that I'm very careful with my fingers yep. uh, yeah. because there's got to be little bits of glass around. It's really interesting that you guys are both thinking that this glass, even though it's the example we gave, the glass is full of liquid. Every time I reckon I've ever dropped a glass, it's always been empty. Yes. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah because, right. Always. Because often... It was the force. The force is probably not enough to tip 
and break the full glass. Oh, good call. But the little nudge in an empty glass sends it Well, flying. I was going to yeah. say, I would have thought more often than not, it is retrieving or placing on a shelf. Oh. That's the, that's the danger zone. I would have thought zone. so, yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's why wine glasses, they're so precarious. Yeah. The, the balance distribution, the weight distribution in a wine glass is so off. Mm. It doesn't make sense that they exist as as much as they do in such a volume. Save them for the connoisseurs of wine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm doing a wine tasting. I'm really into wine. I'm going to yep. learn this. Have the proper receptacle. Mm. Here's something that's top heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aren't they impossible to load into a dishwasher? Don't, don't put them in the dishwasher. Don't put them in the dishwasher I'm at sorry? all. You don't, you're not meant the to? The force of the water... But there's place like for the thou- stems. ...is like a thousand storms in one. Wait, you're going to break the... How do you clean up broken glass from a... Fucking dishwasher. You don't, you don't know that. You've never been inside a dishwasher. You don't know what it's like. There's not like lightning and hail in there. <laughs> There's little ships, <laughs> white whales. Just Christian. Lastly, what are you doing? I want your insight. How are you cleaning up glass? Are you smashing on the ground? What are your What are your receptacles? What are yeah, you using? I think I mirror Josh's process basically one for one. Yep. There's a. I think you've skipped over that first moment mm. of assessing yes. the scene. Weird. You're just stepping back. There's danger. Have you ever had glass yeah, in your foot? stepping back. No, but why you just stand there? Just yeah. stand there. Yeah, there's a good, I reckon there's a good spot. Well, the glass can't see you if you don't move. No, no, no. Sta- <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I dropped a glass. <laughs> no, you stand there and you call for a pair of thongs. That's call what I do. Thong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a cricket player or something. <laughs> thongs. Thongs, please. But surely, like, you want to get away from no, the crash zone. No, 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 no. Because... There's nothing... Glass can fly. It can and go it extraordinarily can, far. Glass has been known to go for kilometres. <laughs> yeah, kilometers. honestly, it, it, that is the, that's the it's thing amazing. that I'm most aware of when I break a glass mm. is how far has this gla- the broken shards yes. flown? Here we go. What is your process for working out any rogue glass? No process. Mm. I, I've got a process. What do you got? I'll tell you what. You get low with a light. Oh, great. And it casts the shadow. Oh, great. Cast no. a shadow? Cast yes. a reflection? No, shadow. shadow. Oh. Like if you get low and you put the light right down on floor level or shoot it across, it casts a long shadow and you might catch oh. a bit of the glass. Oh. That is so bullshit, Josh. No, it's not. Why don't you just do a broom of the floor? Because you don't know how far it's a gone. A sweep of the floor. <laughs> a brush of the floor. <laughs> yeah. In <You> broom. Because <laughs> you don't know how far it's gone. But if you do the entire room... You're the safe. entire room. Oh, does anyone vacuum the glass? Yeah, of course I vacuum the glass. Vacuum the glass. Oh, sh- vacuum a, a, the a shag, a carpet. You got to vac. Oh, you, you chuck vac- it. Chuck it out. Chuck the <laughs> chuck the rug chuck, out. No, you chuck a rug out. Not a not a bit of carpet. You're not chucking a rug. It'd be pretty hard. You're to not get- a rug chucker, are you? <laughs> Damn, listen. I can't believe it's taken seventy six <laughs> patches to learn that you're a rug chucker. <laughs> It's out. It's out. I do have another story of one of my friends, uh, Rachel, and what she did when she broke a glass a few years ago, which was very interesting to me. Uh, but maybe we'll save that for the bonus patch for Patreons, uh, and we'll record that after the show. Yep, sounds good. A couple of seasons ago, uh, we did some in-show ad reads, and whilst we're not doing them anymore, we really enjoyed uh, doing the ads, coming up with the ideas, and... We thought it would be fun to come up with some fictitious ads, <laughs> but make sure that obviously the critical part of any ad is the slogan that falls at the end. So I've come up with a slogan for a fictitious company. Great. Neither of you know what that slogan is. So I'd like to workshop it with you just to see which of us sure. can get the best read of this slogan. <laughs> Great. Sounds good. Uh, Dion, I've just sent you the slogan. Uh, would you like to just, I just want to hear your first organic read. Yeah, sure. At Wombat Mattress, a full night's sleep is no longer just a dream. Oh, I liked your just a dream. Just a dream. And that yeah. was really good. And the pause, I think that is such a critical component. <laughs> it's the pause. Josh? At Wombat Mattress, a full night's sleep is no longer just a dream. Not oh, bad. Not I didn't bad. like I did, it. I did like Dion's yeah. a little bit Piggybacked more. Piggybacked a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel. <laughs> Not original. <laughs> um at Wombat Mattress, a full night's sleep is no longer just a dream. Oh, I went for the very casual. Yeah. Wait, am I going to win uh, a yeah, game? I can love that. Let's, we're still workshopping. Yeah, we're still, that okay, was too, okay, that okay. Was too that casual. Was too okay. casual. I was just trying to give it something else. Okay, it's I not think, about winning. It's so about think, the best think, ad, right? Yeah. I think the thing I like, Dion, and if we can get a bit more of that, is yeah. your, your just a dream was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Okay. It's like, it felt like I was stepping downstairs <laughs> as I was yeah. getting towards the end of it. Okay. At Wombat Mattress, a full night's sleep is no longer just a dream. Uh, it's great. It I think is that's so it. good. I don't want to do my own. It's no longer. I, just and, a dream. I, and I know that y- you'll hate this, but D- 
Dion, you win. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think we can improve on that slogan read. So I think Dion is the winner for today. Christian? Okay. Uh, so Dion, yes, you are the winner for today. And that means you get to read the full ad. Wombat Mattress uses a patented three-ply foam top sheet technology to evenly distribute pressure across your entire body while you sleep. Whether you sleep on your side, your back, your tummy, or standing up, your Wombat Mattress will continue to support your spine. We've sold mattresses to thousands of Australian families and aren't planning to stop anytime soon. At Wombat Mattress, a full night's sleep is no longer just a dream. <laughs> That's great. Recently, I've been taking a very specific note in my mind about the speed at which people move around me. Mm. And I have come to the conclusion that I move much slower at at, at an average speed of walking than everyone else. And I don't know why, Mm. but everyone... I everyone seems to walk at a much faster pace, but not be disgruntled by that pace. Yeah. And it cotton to me when I saw a tram coming the other day and it was approaching my stop and I was like, I'm not going to make this. I'm walking. I don't want to speed up. And I was like, I'm going to see if walking at my pace will get me to the tram. The guy next to me was walking. He blew past me at yeah. his regular speed. Made the tram, I didn't. And I was like, he didn't have to change his pace. I didn't change my pace. I didn't make it. Why are you going so slow? I just like a stroll. A meander. I really like to meander. Oh, I, I, I dream of walking slowly. <laughs> why don't you? I don't understand. Everyone's like... Do you know why? Because I walk quickly. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> are you like... aware of the fact that you walk quickly? Yeah. And I think that it comes down, Josh, to this thing we've been talking about, about efficiency of getting to a particular place. But mm. Christian... I don't think you should be concerned at all about being a slow walker unless it's one lane on a pavement and you're holding people up and they're not able to overtake you. I, then it's causing problems. I'm not I'm not hands behind my back strolling, looking yeah. at the floor. It's not an old man pace, but it's just that is my default walking speed and it's considerably slower. I think the big difference for me is do I have somewhere to be or do I not? For instance, my pace of walk in the morning, walking towards work, I've got to be there on a particular time. Yes. I'm going to walk quicker. Going home, I'm like, I'm just going home. There's no, there's no rush for me yeah. to get so here. So it changes. Been, so yeah, your walk, really? Yeah. So if you're, because you love a late night walk, you love I'm a late sorry? night walk. You love a late night walk from the city. Sometimes you'll go, sure. oh, I'll walk oh, home from actually. the city. Yeah, that's great. What's the? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Josh, <laughs> your whole face. <laughs> You had so much disdain for Dion and then recognised that no, no. That's- it was just that moment where I was like, I'm going to say something about you that I know about you and then you're going to dispute it straight away <laughs> and then I'm going to feel disconnected. Um, but so so that pace at night, are you in any hurry to get home? Um, oh, on a nighttime walk, it's more to the rhythm of the music. If I am if I had a few beers uh-huh. and I'm wandering home, which is generally that will be, I've got my music in. Not it'll, the rhythm of the night. <laughs> the rhythm of the night. Okay. But it'll be to the music. So I'll probably have a pretty pretty quick pace. Yep. Um, but yeah, I find the, the times that I do want to speed up. So say I just, maybe, maybe I'm going for the tram and I know I probably should be a little bit quicker here. Mm. Not that I can see it, but I'm like, I should pick up my pace. I just increase my gait slightly. Unbelievable. Wow. So I don't really, I'm not really moving oh, quicker. Mechanics. You're so aware of the walk. Yeah, I'm not really. Nah. And the, the most important time I use that is when you're approaching someone else and you want to overtake them, but your pace isn't significantly quicker. Yeah. I don't want to slowly overtake someone and be next to them <laughs> yeah. for 40, 50, 60 seconds. Yeah. yeah. So, but I don't want to look like I'm running past them. Just increase the gate a little bit, get you through that awkward but hang situation. On, wow. Hang on, hang on. That increasing the gate, you're increasing it by ten centimeters per pace or something. Maybe, yeah. Like that's surely that's not increasing your like over a marathon, <laughs> yes, you'd you'd get there quicker. But surely that's not making a it massive d- it difference. It does a lot. Does you'd it? Be, you'd be surprised. <laughs> No, it really does work a lot. Like, and you, and you don't look like you're rushing. You don't look like you're moving very quickly at all. Mm. It looks like you're just walking normally, but you're just getting there a little bit quicker, overtaking that person that little bit quicker. Interesting. And then there's that moment, right, where Christian, you were describing mm-hmm. the tram is approaching, and you got to make that call: Am I running for it or not? And there's that thought in your head, was like, if I don't make it, I'm going to get to that door, and my face is going to be, spl- you know, my lips are going to be splashed on the door as as, <laughs> as as it as it meanders off. 
do you like because you don't want to you look like an idiot when you're tra- when you're chasing a tram you don't make it yeah you know that that what, what is the, your the, reaction the, the, when you do, do you know you miss why it? because you never experience such a significant power imbalance between a group of people and a single other person than yeah. at that moment. That's true. You have, let's say, 50 odd people yep. who can see you and go, yes. I'm on the tram and you're not. Yes. Good so, luck. So, what's your reaction if you just don't make the tram and you just get to touch the door? I... Would you go, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel I haven't missed it for ages. Really? I, I've done enough assessment to understand my body and its limits, and I know if I can make that tram no, or not. No, it's not your body, though. You just no, never no, know no. when the lights are going to turn red. No, but you do. But like, if it's a familiar tram stop, I'm, I'm lo- this is what I'm engaging yeah, in. Yeah. I'm looking at, is it a green light going this direction? Is it going that direction? Yeah. Okay, well, the tram's going to be stopped at the next change of lights. Oh, that's changing now. Great. I'm going to be able to make it. It's going to be stopped at the red. I, These I, are the things I'm assessing. Yeah, I think you're not placing enough emphasis on the fact that you have long legs. So, and with an adjustable gait as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the mechanics of your walk, you have, you glide through the air. No, but I'm still, but I, but I know the same way you know your pace. I'm saying I know what I'm capable of to get to that tram on time. So I'm not, I'm not committing to the run unless I'm certain I'm going to be able to get there. Yeah, but also if I go, I'm going to commit to this and I can make it. By the time I get there, a little bit, I feel a little bit hot. Yeah. My clothes are a bit sticky And yes. I don't want those feelings yeah, Still, ever. Great feeling when you board the tram though When you catch a tram that you didn't think you were going to get It's a great feeling You it save is. yourself 15 minutes If it saves you a big time, that feels great And then, and what about like a late night tram that comes every 45 And you make oh. that What, what, oh, what a what? feeling <laughs> Yeah That's what should play Yeah <laughs> Every time. Every time. So you just two, make it. two minutes to go until the tram arrives, they just start playing What a Feeling. I'd be great. No, they keep, the driver, they, they keep an eye out for any people running for the tram. We go, great, we got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, what, what a, that, at that moment, I feel so connected to humanity mm. when the tram they driver, you. when they do oh. a little wait. They get it. They get it, they get right? It. The other thing in terms of uh, quick walking, yep. I was wondering, when was the last time that you guys were actually in a, a race? Like a proper competitive race. A walking Ooh. race? Or any kind of race. A running a race ru- as well. A running race. Because my, mm. I think the last time was probably in high school and I, I did partake in the walk at the athletics carnival. I didn't know that was ever... Was that ever an, uh, an optional sport? The walk? Yeah, the walk. Bizarre. So the proper Very walk. Very progressive school. It's great. This is what, 15 years ago now. No, it was great and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I got stiffed because I got lied to. What do you mean? What do you mean? So they had judges, right? On pointed like it was just around the track, the oh, 400 meter track, to make sure that one heel was on the ground yes. at all times. So they had that, but like there was one teacher on one side and not teacher on the other side, and I was, you know, as I want to do, taking it seriously. And of course, how the hell is Lachlan McKinnon able to overtake me around a bend on the outside? Shouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. shouldn't happen. Yep. Definitely running. Yep. Yet when we get to the other side with the teacher, oh look, everyone's all even now, aren't they? Yeah. And then on the last lap, we were going through, and I, I had no idea how many laps we had to do because like I can't remember how many, you know, fifteen hundred or whatever it was. Yeah. And one of the teachers from the opposing houses, he was like, oh, you got like three or four more, three or four more. I was like, okay. And then I come back for the next one, like ding ding, that's the end of the race. Oh. oh wow, I was like, wait. I would have pushed myself way harder for those laps. Did, did you do that race? Was it kind of like a bit of a joke? Um, was it we really did, we, serious? We took it as surely, <laughs> surely. It sounds as though they've said, "Hey, everyone who wants to actually compete in this carnival, do the run." Mm. For everyone else, if you want to compete, no, yeah, go done. for a walk. walk. It was done properly, was it? Yeah, like what, people got teachers, disqualified. Teachers adjudicating whether you have two feet on the floor. People at every got given disqualified. Time. He said, yeah. "That's amazing." For doing what? Running. Not walking. I love the idea that a teacher, <laughs> a, like a, a physics teacher, a you year eight yeah, physics right, teacher, <laughs> you know exactly goes, who it is. Pretty sure his foot was off the ground there. <laughs> yeah, and there's no way to dispute it, is there? No, there's, there's no channel oh, for come that. On. <laughs> come on, Mr. Kamaliri. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to take you to Wada. <laughs> You've been doping. <laughs> One thing that really frustrates me that people do when they're put in a position that they have to walk quickly. So let's say that you're crossing the road mm-hmm. and there is a car coming and you're like, I should probably increase my speed to make sure I don't collide with this car. I don't collide with the car, but the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Story changes if Josh or I say it. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Huh? Ow. laughs> um, one of the things that really frustrates me in that example is people tend to get into this half jog 
so that it's a big gesture yes. to the car approaching that yes. hey I'm I'm shuffling here but they're actually not increasing their speed yep. they're yeah. just making their limbs quite a uh, gesture quite a, a it's a big grandiose movement yes i think i'm going to really struggle when i'm older cuz i i i'm i used to do athletics as a kid i used to sprint and i'm pretty quick across the road when i like a pigeon like a pigeon <laughs> when i don't get when i'm not used to how slowly that that little sort of um run across the road becomes i think i'm going to be a bit of trouble i think i think my death will be getting hit by a car <laughs> i'm calling it now jesus christ yeah, i'm calling it now That's i okay. reckon i reckon what your death will be is eating a panadol and exploding <laughs> Every now and then on Welcome to Patchwork, we like to introduce you to new words to help increase your vocabulary. Um, We call it Patchword of the Day. And Christian, would you like to kick us off with your Patchword of the Day? Thank you, Josh. Michael could see the waiter approaching his table. As his order slowly came into view, he began to boil over with fury. He had been very clear that he did not want anchovies on his pizza. Michael preempted the waiter's delivery and stood to his feet. There's more fish on my pizza than in a goddamn aquarium. <laughs> the patchword of the day is aquarium. That's great. Dion? Albert was in a shoe store with his, <laughs> with his friend Eve. He was on the lookout for running shoes. After looking for several minutes, he picked up a shoe he liked and asked Eve what she thought of it. Eve said, yes, I like them, but they look a bit... Effeminate. <laughs> The patchword of the day is... Effeminate. <laughs> and Josh, your patchword. As Toby entered the bedroom of his date for the first time, he noticed a huge collection of porcelain dolls all wearing tiny straw boater hats. Wow, said Toby. That's pretty... Niche. <laughs> <laughs> the patchword of the day is... <laughs> niche. <laughs> Good. You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? And we love hearing your really goods here, so make sure you jump on our socials. Every couple of weeks we do really good Fridays. Jump on your Twitter, jump on your Instagram, jump on your Facebook and join in. You know what Jay Laurie 15 thinks is really good? When you're running late and find a parking spot right outside the venue. Really, really good. good. Really good. Really, really good. good. And you know what Stephanie Sav thinks is really good? Putting your hand into your messy bag and pulling out exactly what you need on the first go. Really, oh, good. really, good. really, good. really good. Really good. Really good. And you know what Daniel Angelucci thinks is really good? When you get in a lift with someone else and their floor is higher than yours. Really good. 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 Thank you so much for listening to Welcome to Patchwork for another week. We don't ask much of you, but one thing we realised was we would love if you could open up Apple Podcasts if you have an iPhone and rate our show. Just rate it whatever you like. You obviously know what we'd want you to rate it, but rate it what you want. If you want to write a review, that's awesome, but that would really, really help us out um, if you could do that. Also, those of you who are in Melbourne in April or for those of you who are interstate and wanting to come to Melbourne, need an excuse, we've got uh, two live comedy festival shows. They're actually totally different shows. A lot of people haven't realised that. They'll be completely different. So if you're a big fan and you want to come to both, you're more than welcome to. But tickets are on sale at the moment. Um, Just head to the comedy festival website, search for Welcome to Patchwork and get your tickets because they're selling out. Also, if you can't make it to the show, or even if you can, become a Patreon. Um, For as little as a couple of dollars a month, uh, you get bonus content. Um, Go to patreon.com forward slash welcome to patchwork and check it out. As we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Josh, what patch did you sew into our quilt this week? Thank you, Dion. My patch this week is Christian working at the Veneto Club, dropping a whole tray of glasses, but blaming it all on the new kid, Mario Rossi. (laughs) (laughs) Christian, what patch did you sew this week? Thank you, Josh. This week I sewed into my patch the kitchen bench top in Dion's childhood home, littered with half open milk cartons <laughs> filled with shards of glass and smashed avocado. <laughs> And Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? My patch this week is Josh asking the local Greyhound Racing Club if they're happy for him to walk around the circuit, but insisting (laughs) that the rabbit being chased on the track be replaced with a tram. (laughs) (laughs) 
Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patrick for another week. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. 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 words and enhance your vocabulary a little bit. It's called patchword of the day. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go, 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 go. That was good. That was good. Smithy.